guys, welcome to me reacting to Game Theory, You Give Them Life, Hello Puppets, Scary VR Game by the Game Theorists. Now, Hello Puppets, I, I saw 8-Bit Ryan play it, and like I saw, yeah, I just saw uh, what it was. And I don't know, I, in my opinion, it, it definitely looked like a really cool game, like a cool VR game. When it comes to story-wise, it didn't really seem that big. Like, yeah. Because, well, yeah, honestly, like, the story does seem simple. It's like, okay, the guy who, like, made the puppets thought there was life in them. Like, actual, like, a soul in them and actually, like, gave them life. Like, somehow gave them life. And then they all of a sudden, like, kill them or something like that or, like... You know, they, like, and then, yeah, they did something with the puppets, and, like, then they became these, like, soul-killing, yeah, soul-killing things that, like, you know, yeah. Well, it's, like, yeah, so, like, they would control the person, I guess. It's just that, like, one thing that I found kind of dumb is, like, the, spoiler, I guess, like, the puppet you have dies in the end. Just kind of stupid, honestly. I thought that was kind of dumb, and it was very forced, I feel like. But, um, yeah, anyways, guys, we're going to the description. Make sure to the game theorist thing. So, in the description, anyways, let's get right into it now. Well, hello, old bean. I have good news for you. Today, you get your very own handyman puppet. Choose whichever you like. Hmm, such a hard choice. How about... No. What? I am not going to choose a puppet. But don't you like puppets? They're fun and full of joy. You are a creepy puppet. Your puppeteer over there is wearing a black hood over his head. Clearly, you've taken over his body and are just trying to trick me to fall for the same thing. Hate to break it to you, but it ain't my first time at this rodeo. But some say the bond between a puppet and his puppeteer is magical. Oh, come on, man. You're even emphasizing the words that are tipping me off to your plan. You see what you're doing here? The bond is magical. Wow. Really can't imagine what's happening here. Listen. Uh, Mortimer? That's what you said your name was? Listen, Morty, if you want to really trick someone, just Morty. look like a normal person, puppet, supernatural creature. Your little self-congratulatory in-jokes that you think are so clever. We all get it, man. We all know what you're doing. So I'll put you down as a no. Also, hide Gimpy back there. He ain't doing you any favors. <laughs> Alright, nice title Hello, Internet. card. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's now legally obligated to cover any indie horror title about friendly children's entertainment cursed with eternal life. Before we did that, did 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 anyone else think of that with the blue eyes? Pre-order right now. Jackets, hats, a wallet, uh. an incredible holographic switch case, all designed for escaping in the great outdoors or the great indoors, depending on your restrictions. Enjoy a little release from the troubles that surround us and some fun new duds, even if it is just for your next Zoom meeting. All the links are down right below this video. In the meantime, today we're looking at the relatively unknown VR game, Hello Puppets, as it becomes the next in a long line to try to steal FNAF's throne. Like many a title I look into, this game too is steeped with ambiguity and hints at a deeper story behind what we see at the surface. So let me give you the spoiler warning up front. We're trying yeah. to solve the ambiguous ending to this game, which means that we'll be exploring all of the game's secrets right up through the last moments. Also, I'm gonna task you with something. Just like Try to Fall Asleep, the other indie game that we recently covered that no one else had really talked about this is a game that more people should be aware of and should be playing so please tweet at your well yeah i know game players and get them to take the well yeah ap ryan already the, did uh, it puppeteer playthrough the sock puppet slam you, i don't know you come up with the catchy phrase Corey x kenshin he's back making videos again so maybe he'll do it jack usual suspect mark maybe he'll stop yelling at sour patch kids to play the game and when they inevitably have a reaction like this what that's it what was that ending what's going on
on here. You can tell him what's up because you live yeah. here first. Yeah. So let's start at the beginning. Well, I already, yeah, yeah April Ryan already played, played it, and he was like that as well. Unnamed but yeah, it was kind of like, wait, what, 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 why? Why did it end there? The warehouse was once a television workshop for the kids' program Mortimer's Handyman, a puppet show ripping off the Muppets. In fact, posters on the wall describe it as being better than the Muppets, so shots fired there. Of course, the Muppets have been around for decades and didn't ever start kidnapping and possessing humans, or at least they did a better job of covering it up. Either way, it's none of my business. Mortimer's Handyman started in 1985, since apparently all horrific murderous children's well, content yeah. originated from the mid-1980s, and had an abrupt ending when a mysterious fire burned down the studio, killing seven and badly injuring many more. What's even more mysterious than the fire, though, is that someone decided to clip the article about the fire out of the newspaper, walk into the burned building, and hang it at the end of a random hallway, for reasons. At the end of that hall, the former star of this old show, Mortimer, greets you from the arm of an unknown and a relatively bored-looking host. Morty asks you to select a puppet, and you choose one named Scout. Once the selection is made, Mortimer begins a ritual meant to bind you and Scout. A ritual that will turn you into Scouts, um... Turn you into scouts. I know that there's a word for this. It's Puppeteer. It's an object that you control with your own body in order to make it seem like a living creature. Puh. Your hand. Only the ritual doesn't actually work. Instead of becoming a mindless husk for your puppet, you retain all of your basic functions, much to the frustration of your new arm companion. No, 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 no! You're supposed to be out! A zombie! Zonked! I'm supposed to control you completely! It's at this point that I have to reveal the secrets of the story. I don't have time to explain everything to you, but basically you're in a decommissioned soundstage filled with murderous sentient puppets, and now they want to drain your life force in order to sustain themselves so they can bring their cancel show back to life and take over the world. But hey, that's just an in-game explanation <laughs> of what's really going on. So, with all that being said, really? what am I covering today? Yeah. Well, stay tuned. We're about to get to that. As the story continues, oh. we learn that Scout has failed her exam to become a full free-roaming puppet twice in the past. You've had two failed tests in the past. Okay. The third attempt will be your last. After realizing well, yeah. that she's failed yet again, a disillusioned scout convinces you to help her to escape. Conveniently, even though your ritual technically failed and you're not a zombie puppeteer, you eventually learn that you and Scout are able to swap brains, where you can enter her consciousness and take over her puppet body. Oh yeah, that was weird. After a long series of fighting henchmen, solving puzzles through your combined human puppet oh, yeah. abilities, you finally that giant the dog for the exit. But in the process of opening the final door, Scout's arm. Yeah, this was stupid. To me. Gets torn off. Over the next minute, Scout professes her friendship for you before suddenly Whoa. and inexplicably dying, leaving you to presumably escape onward. Oh and god, that game just broke. Sweet, but also logically a really weird moment. She lost well, her yeah. Own, sure, but she's still a puppet. It's not like she's bleeding yeah, out. Yeah, I was gonna say that, like, I, that was my feeling. Like, she doesn't, she's not bleeding out. Some kind of torn apart and sewn back together. That's what's so weird. A puppet. So immediately, there's something here that doesn't make a whole lot of sense sense but we'll come back to that yeah right why does she die move scout from your hand the whole world gets washed out with a bright white light and you find yourself sitting in a theater with a bunch of stuffed bears yeah and then the game ends credits. and from there that's pretty much it if you let the game keep running you just start back where you originally began in the first hallway of the game as though nothing ever happened so what happened did your character just escape? Did the puppets die? Most importantly of all, though, did we end up starting that talk show? Shake if you want the talk show. A talk show? I like that. <coughs> we'll call it, like, Talk to the Hand. <laughs> Things are suspect right from the beginning of the game. During the ritual sequence, your character seems to teleport to a void with a rickety bridge. Your oh yeah, that was weird. By Mortimer, but instead, a door opens up with Scout's face peering back at you. With little choice, you run towards the open door and find yourself back in the real world holding Scout. After this, you're the only host who has any sort of agency ever in this process. Over the course of the hundred or so times that we're led to believe the puppets have performed this ritual in the past, it seems to have worked totally fine with everyone yeah. that they've chosen as a victim, so why did it not work for you? Was it something you did? Why are you spared the mind meld that everyone else underwent? We see during the game's tea party scene that Anthony Pearson, a paranormal investigator who's recording oh, the yeah. studio, has been fully integrated as a host for the puppets. In fact, he's Mortimer's puppeteer from the very beginning of the game. He's a lifelong paranormal normal investigator with an Illuminati tattoo. He would certainly have been more prepared for an incoming puppet curse than, you know, you, college journalist, but somehow the ritual worked perfectly on him. That idea makes me scratch my little theorist head and ask, what if it wasn't you? 
What if this whole thing wasn't an accident? What if the entire time you were meant to not be fully under Scout's control? Mortimer was performing the same ritual we know that he's performed many, many times in the well, yeah. If the meat locker scene in this game is any indication, it may have been dozens to hundreds of times before this one moment. So this isn't the kind of glitch caused by inexperience or unfamiliarity. So what if instead we conclude that Scout couldn't take control of us because that wasn't her goal in the first place? What if we entertain the idea that your work, oh! your fight through the warehouse, and even your escape was all intentional? Let's look at the evidence. Both Mortimer, oh, Mortimer that actually would make sense. Scout, your own personal puppet seem to want you to escape from the get-go. Scout is obvious, right? She literally just tells you that if you can't escape, you both die. Mortimer, though, is a little more subtle in his pushing, but not entirely. And why is Mortimer helping us? That makes no sense. Aside from leaving bits of his security badge around for you to find, Mortimer explicitly gives gives you an opportunity to escape when you first meet him. Not even a tough opportunity either, he just wants you to pour tea with milk and sugar for each of the puppets. If you're British, you'd argue that you should have put the milk in first, but other than that, Mortimer isn't exactly quibbling over the details. When you succeed, Mortimer starts talking about letting you go. Host and scout, I propose a competition. A kind of compromise, where possibly neither one of you dies. And it's only Riley's protests that make it seem like you need to escape. As she starts yelling about how you and Scout are her property, Mortimer slams his puppet hand on the table in order to flip out the control panel for the room. For as ominous as Mortimer is, he also never poses any direct sort of threat to you. Other yeah. puppets send henchmen to stop the Oh yeah, that set thing. Up puzzles that are impossible to pass, but Mortimer, he just keeps things moving along. So what is the goal here? Why help you out? Well, again, Scout has already explicitly told us this. Basically, you're in a decommissioned soundstage filled with murderous sentient puppets from a canceled children's TV show who were brought to life by an evil voodoo spell, and now they want to drain your life force in order to sustain themselves so they can bring their canceled show back to life and take over the world. The big points in this plan are, one, the puppets aren't just using you as a free ride, they're also draining your life force, and two, the bigger plan is to restart their TV show and take over the world. Now, I'll admit they may have underpants gnomed this situation a little bit. I don't get it. You see? Phase one, collect underpants. Phase two, Profit. But it still paints a picture of what they hope to achieve. There are some hints throughout the game that they've already started recording whatever this new show is, but there's a bigger issue with making content than just the making of it. They need to broadcast it, at which point, presumably, it just takes over the world. I guess no one yeah. the cable isn't a thing anymore and that they're going to have to contend with 8,000 different streaming services. But whatever, welcome to modern times. The point is that the logistics of getting a TV show on the airwaves, even if those airwaves are just YouTube internet waves, are a tough ask for a puppet who we established in the game as not being able to read. So yeah. These puppets is even supposed to be a brilliant scientist, but they're totally illiterate, as you find out when you have to read everything for them in the game. So immediately we oh. know they need a real intact human being and not a zombie. So yeah, that's what they did. They intentionally did that? They're going to need people, or at the very he was a real person? reading comprehension to actually air their show, which means that they're not going to just want passive human hosts. They want that brain swapping ability that we see between you and Scout. Your connection between puppet and human isn't an accident there. It's a necessity for them to get what they want. From there, with that realization under our belt. Wait, so is Scout does so Scout so actually trick you? A much bigger theory in this game. What happens in that ambiguous ending? Let's revisit what we see. Your character removes Scout from the Yeah, does Scout trick you? Light, but you're not back to your normal life at that point. The credits roll in a bizarre theme theater attended by teddy bears not a police station where yeah is that why recording the meat locker full of dead people down at the knockoff muppet studio <laughs> in fact you seem to be inside the building still at least the design and architecture look the same but why why would we still be in the building more bizarre so did mortimer the kill the only thing that happens the puppet the starts over only this time you can't select the same puppet again that means that we've continued in the continuity of the last playthrough and either you're playing a Again, as the same person, an option that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Or but now the next victim who stumbled into the warehouse, and the whole process is repeating itself. Well, I think that's the entire wait. What? what? Are trying to tell us where did our original character go? Why would we still be in the theater rather than running down the street? I didn't know that actually happened. Bloody, bloody puppet murder that we just avoided. Well, it's because we're not in our character's body anymore. We have no reason to scream bloody murder. We are now Scout. Remember how that brain. 
swap ability works. When we're in Scout's brain, we retain our own consciousness. We just see what she's well, yeah. and take on her abilities, and vice versa. A brain swap in the other direction would mean that she is now in our brain. Scout would retain her own consciousness, but just operate our body directly. She could see what we see and take on our abilities. Like the most important ability of all, just being a person and blending into humans. Oh my god, is this like freaking... To be a is this like, like freaking FNAF? Friends launch a TV show in their attempts to take is this like, this is like spring trap with, no, um, glitch trap with freaking FNAF. I was willing to go with it because the writing of that scene was touching, but under the... Well, no, the writing was pretty bad because it felt forced. To tell what actually is happening. It felt forced. Scott stops talking and is no longer sewn on to us, but almost immediately following that, our whole view... Well, not only that, your, your view goes to red. ...this fade to white would be us passing out? Dying? If it's just us escaping, then why not have us actually walk through a door why not show us the outside world yeah isn't that stanley parable we're not no the more logical answer here is that this whiteout moment is the final brain swap scout leaves her body sure oh which is why it's lifeless and the stitches come out but she didn't just die she brain swapped into our body instead of taking us on as a passive host but still operating as a puppet now she can operate as a fully fleshed person the puppets have managed to remove the middleman in their quest for world domination by directly possessing humans rather than just using their life force and getting someone's hand shoved where the sun don't shine when the game starts up again after the credits roll the process repeats with a puppet failing to take over your body then coercing you into a false sense of security and camaraderie before making the ultimate brain hop and adding you to the crew of the world's deadliest kids oh. TV show. at least as far as we know those muppets are looking mighty shifty mm. over there but hey, oh that's it that's just a okay theory. so yeah this actually wasn't a bad theory yeah that actually wasn't a bad theory honestly because i feel like with the game there's really nothing there's nothing much with that game. I, I, I don't really find the story that interesting. Like, I mean, it's okay. It's just the ending felt forced. And I think that was it. And that's why I didn't really enjoy that much. Uh, well, I didn't actually play the game, so I don't know how the gameplay is. But the story didn't really look... It looked okay. But, um, yeah, anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the like and the video, subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye!